Hello, this is Patrick at 1CNC West, and I'm very pleased and excited to be able to present the new features of 1CNC XR7. So let's get started. Why don't we take a look at the user interface first? Now with XR7, you're going to have the ability to utilize the most workspace possible. Let me demonstrate. If you look over on the right hand side of the screen and the left hand side of the screen, you're going to notice two brand new vertical buttons. If you left click on one of these buttons, 1CNC quickly hides that toolbar. Now you can see I can utilize the complete right hand side of the screen to perform my work. Of course you can come over and collapse the left hand toolbar as well, and now you're working in full screen mode. This is a great new enhancement to 1CNC. In fact, when you're working in full screen mode, you can utilize all of your available toolbars, including the quick access toolbar and all of your drop down menus. This is a great new enhancement, and I think this is a feature that you're going to be using a lot. Now let's take a look further at the user interface by looking in the lower left hand corner. You'll notice now that your color palettes for wireframe geometry, your solids and surfaces, your line style, and your alter command are now efficiently all located in the lower left hand corner. In previous versions of 1CNC, these four commands were located on the right hand side, which was great, but you had to move your cursor back and forth. But now in XR7, they're all conveniently and efficiently located in the lower left hand corner. Very, very nice. Lower right hand corner, you have your cursor tracking, and of course you have this selected layer. All right, now let's take a look at themes. Now you're probably familiar with themes uh, from XR6, XR7 continues to utilize themes. In fact, two of the themes have been modified. What you're looking at right now is the traditional theme, and this has been modified with new icons as well as new color highlights on the toolbars. Now let's take a look at the 1CNC default theme. You can see this has been updated and changed in XR7. And then of course from XR6, XR7 is bringing back the cool blue theme and the dark shadow theme. Very, very nice. Now let's go back to the traditional theme now. That looks good. And now let's take a look at document settings. This is a very exciting new feature with XR7. And let me demonstrate. If we head up here to File, you're probably already familiar with this option here called 1CNC Properties. Let me explain what this is first quickly. This is just the ability to set up the defaults for your 1CNC software. So every time you launch the software, 1CNC is going to use these properties. But what's new to XR7 and what's very exciting is there's a new option here called Document Settings. Now what document settings does is it provides the ability to set up settings or defaults for this particular part file. So once you save this part file, when you load this part file up a week from now, a month from now, two years from now, 1CNC is going to load these settings up. You have control over your text, your dimension style, and your colors as well. All right, now let's elaborate a little bit on the dimension side of things. XR7 now brings forward the ability to select different styles. You can select whatever style you want. Also notice quickly within XR7, there's a brand new arrow type, which is open arrow. And also notice XR7 provides the ability now to set the size of your arrow using dimensions. In past versions of 1CNC, this was a percentage of the text height. So some great new additions to the CAD side of 1CNC, and this happens to be one of them. This is the ability to set up defaults for your part file. Okay, and so that's called document settings very very nice new command. Another new and efficient tool provided by XR7 is the ability to color surfaces and or faces on your parts. For example here you can see we have a solid model alright but you'll also notice that I had the ability to change the color of some of these surfaces or faces. Now the reason why this is important is because these colors can flag you or your programmers to represent things like a different surface finish or maybe a certain set of tools that need to be used to perform the machining on that area of the part. Other uses of colors could be clamping locations or fixture details and things like that. Very, very nice new tool provided by XR7. Let me quickly show you where that is. If we look over here on the main toolbar, if I click on model colors, you can see a brand new suite of commands here. We take a look at this first one called color surface. Once I left hand click, you can see that this is a brand new color palette. It provides a favorites list here. You can also select whatever color you'd like. 
for example I'm going to choose this light blue color and all I have to do is just hover over a surface and left hand mouse click and one CNC will quickly color that surface and what's very nice about this is this still remains one solid model in past versions of one CNC you'd have to explode this solid model into individual surfaces to get the same type of effect so a very nice new powerful feature within XR7 is the ability to work with colors and your surfaces all right, now let's take a look at something else that's very exciting about XR7. And this is the enhancement in regards to selecting geometry. Now in the past, you probably already noticed that you can select geometry using a myriad of different tools. You could select by color, by layer. You could use a region select or chain select, but that's been further enhanced within XR7. There's a brand new, very powerful tool within XR7 called Smart Selection. Now what Smart Selection does, it expands the way that you can select geometry. If you're bringing CAD files in from another CAD system, you now have the ability to quickly identify duplicate geometry, overlapping geometry. You can select geometry by connections, by type, by arc diameter, by the length, by the Z position, by the line style, and by the property. So for example, if I activate by type, if I were to click on the circle option, all the circles get selected. I can uncheck that and select arc, and only the arcs are selected. Very, very nice new enhancement and feature provided by XR7. This is really a fantastic new feature, and it's called Smart Selection. Let's go ahead and shut that down. Now, in regards to selecting geometry, there's another feature within XR7 that I'd like to demonstrate here. In fact, I'm going to turn the layer off that shows the solid model, so we just have the wireframe geometry here. Now, let's say, for example, I need to create points in the center of these arcs. All right, well, there's a brand new quick snap option provided by XR7. It's very exciting. I want to demonstrate it right now for you. If we go into point, notice within our quick snap options, there's a brand new one here that allows us to snap arc centers only. So if I activate that by left clicking on it, one CNC is now only going to let me select arc centers. I can quickly just move my cursor around and left hand mouse click, and I'm not going to accidentally select the end point or midpoint of a line or the circumference of an arc, I'm only going to have the ability to select arc centers. This is a great new addition to one CNC and it's a brand new quick snap option which allows you to snap the center of arcs. Now while the wireframe geometry is still displayed, let's take a further look at the advancements provided by one CNC XR7 and CAD. In fact, let's take a look at dimensions. So I'm going to head over to the main toolbar. We're going to select dimensions. The first thing I want to point out is the edit dimension command. Now, in previous versions of 1CNC, the Edit Dimension command was located in a submenu. Now, with XR7, the Edit Dimension command is located on this very first menu that pops up, so it makes it very accessible. Also new to XR7 is Dimension Style. This is very powerful. This allows you to select whatever dimension style that you'd like. What also makes this very powerful is that you can create all your detailing, all your dimensions and you can come back later choose a different dimension style and all your detailing and all your dimensions will update to that new dimension style so very very powerful to XR7 and that is the new dimension style now let's take a look at these typical types of dimensions that we're going to create in fact let's change our view to a top view I'm going to zoom out and pan over just a little bit and so I'm going to use horizontal as an example but when I demonstrate really is applicable to all these different types of dimensions let's go to horizontal I'm going to quickly left click and left click and let's just drag up a dimension right there and the first thing you're going to notice is a brand new dialog box now in its simplest format it looks just like this but you can also expand it let's take a look at just this right now the idea here is that you you can modify this dimension as you create it. In fact, if you're happy with the dimension, you can just click OK and be on your way. However, if you want to modify that dimension, you can easily do that now with XR7. The first thing you can do is add text to your dimension. So if I wanted to, I'm just going to type in the word sample as an example here, and we'll click OK to that, and there you go. You can see the text has been added to that. Let's take a look at this a little closer. I'm going to bring this back up. And what we're going to do now is notice that you can also put in your tolerance ranges. And so we could, for example, use plus minus. I might put in 10 thousands for that and we'll click OK. And there you go. There is the, the ranges being placed on that. Let's go back now. Let's use vertical for this. I'm going to click here 
and click here. Let's place that here. Now let's say that this was a lathe print and this happened to be a diameter. Well notice now there's symbols that can be applied to the dimension. There's diametrical, radial, and degrees. I'm going to click on diametrical. I'll click OK to that and there you go. You can see there's the diametrical symbol that's been added on there. Let's wrap this up by making one more dimension. Let's go back into horizontal. I'll bring this up here, place it right about there. If I expand this out, I want to point out that you have control over your style. That's the actual style of the text or detailing and dimensions. You also have control over the, the arrow type that you're selecting from. Also the dimension style, the options here for your decimals. You have control over your leader text and of course the font style as well. I'm going to go ahead and just click OK to that. And away we go. So that is brand new to one CNC XR7. The ability to really go in there and adjust your dimensions every time you create a new one. Very, very powerful for one CNC XR7. Another thing too, before I wrap up on the CAD side, one CNC has also made some great advancements in regards to text as well. Okay. All right. Now let's take a look at manufacturing. I'm going to undo our dimensions here and let's go back to our layer browser and let's turn on our solid model. And let's take a look now at manufacturing. Now one of the first things we should talk about in regards to XR7 and manufacturing is active cut technology. Now active cut technology is very exciting in that it's a technology that one CNC developed quite some time ago and is responsible for the very efficient toolpath that we're accustomed to today provided by one CNC. Now with the release of XR7, one CNC has officially branded active cut technology and they've used that to further enhance toolpath. In fact, with active cut technology, you're going to notice that the toolpath is even more efficient than before and also prolongs the life of the tool even longer. Let me demonstrate. Now in this example, you can see we have a pocket operation. I'm going to quickly edit this. Let's go to edit operation. And what we're going to do is take a look at this dialog box and the first thing you'll note is there's a new option here called feed control. This is very powerful and a brand new addition to one CNC. Now what this does is this is going to take the tool and it's going to slow the feed rate down when the tool approaches a sharp corner or when the tool has to cut an arc of a certain radius size. Let's take a look at the details here. Let's open up this dialog box and let's activate this. First thing I want to talk about is the feed rate control. By default, it's going to slow the feed rate down by 50%, but of course you can type in whatever you'd like there. I'll type in 40% for example. Up here, these are the conditions in which the tool feed rate is going to slow down. The first condition is when the tool approaches a corner. Now right now, this is set so that the feed rate is going to slow down when the tool approaches 25% of its diameter close to the corner. You can put in whatever percentage of diameter you want, or if you want to, you could click manual and you can type in a value. So if I type in 250 thousandths, that simply means that the feed rate is going to slow down when that tool approaches all sharp corners and is away by 250 thousandths. Now the next condition is when the tool has to cut arcs of a certain radius size. So here the default is percentage of tool and right now it's 25%. If you want to, you could click manual and you can type in a value if you want. So if I type in 375 thousandths, that means anytime that tool cuts an arc that has a radius of 375 thousandths or less, it's going to slow the feed rate down by 40%. Now the idea here is even though we're slowing the feed rates down, that gives us the opportunity to increase the feed rates here. This means that for all linear cuts or when cutting arcs that are large, we can cut using this higher feed rate and then when it comes to cutting corners or small arcs, we're going to slow that feed rate down. Now in real world example testing, this type of feed control has actually reduced cycle time up to 30% and more. Very, very powerful new feature in regards to one CNC XR7. Now let's take a look at another item that one CNC XR7 has implemented within the mill software. This is very important. This has to do with high speed machining on pockets like this where the tool is just barely big enough to fit inside there. Now let me give you an example. Let's sit over here and let's go into our pocket operation. I'm going to select that pocket right there and I'm going to use a diameter tool that can barely fit in there. In fact, I'm going to use a 0.625. That's going to be a 5 eighths diameter in mill 0.625 and we're going to say all this looks fine we're going to click next on that and let's check our clearance values I'm going to say all that looks fine I'm going to use high speed closed and this is what I want to point out in previous versions of one CNC we did not have the ability to control the actual diameter of the ramp helix 
in one CNC XR7 we can do that and here it says using that tool the ramp helix diameter you can use a minimum of 0.156 or you can use a maximum of 0.625 now I'm going to change the helix diameter to 0.157 we're going to click next on that we'll let one CNC generate the toolpath and what you can see now is that tool can now helix in there using that very small helix diameter again this is brand new to XR7 part of the active cut technology and a very powerful addition to one CNC now let's take a look at another very exciting feature that one CNC XR7 provides now this is the ability to enter into a pocket exactly where you want to when performing high-speed machining let's demonstrate so the first thing I'm going to do is change my view to a top view and why don't we sketch a couple of circles I'm going to left click there and left click there that looks good now let's drill those so we're going to head over to the main toolbar select stock tool pass and from there what we're going to select is the drill single command let's use arc center and let's just left click both of those circles right hand mouse click and select finish that looks good now I already have a tool selected so I'm gonna say that's fine let's click next and my depths look good except I'm gonna change that to minus two hundred and fifty thousandths let's just use a can cycle on that and so there we go we've drilled that now let's head back over to the main toolbar and select our high-speed pocket operation that looks good I'm gonna be using a 5 8 diameter end mill that looks fine so we'll click next on that and our depths look good all this looks fine but notice now there's a brand new option here called select an entry position so with that checked and plunge selected let's go ahead and select next and these parameters look good I'm just gonna blast through and just simply left hand mouse click those circle locations and you'll see now that one CNC has used those locations to enter the tool into the pocket let's change to a top view and there you go you can see the tool path the high-speed machining has started exactly where we specified this is a very powerful new enhancement that's been added to one CNC XR7 now one CNC has also added a very versatile powerful new pocket operation which is high-speed zigzag pocketing let me demonstrate that for you so what we're gonna do is this we're gonna head over to our main toolbar and let's go back into our pocket operation we're going to select the exact same pocket that we did before. I'm going to use a smaller diameter tool. I have a half inch diameter end mill here. And we're going to blast through this and say, oh, that's good. And here's the brand new operation called high speed zigzag pocketing. What's unique about this pocket operation is that the tool actually comes back on where it previously cut. So it doesn't leave those little cusp marks that typically get left when performing a standard zigzag pocket operation. So let's demonstrate that. I'm going to ramp in at 30 degrees. We're going to say that's fine. My step over and everything else I'm going to say looks great. We'll just let it execute the command. All right, so to better demonstrate this, let's take this into simulate. We're going to right hand mouse click. We'll go into simulate. I'm going to use my stock model. All right, and let's slow this down just a little bit here. I'm going to restart it for you. And you'll notice that every time the tool makes a pass, let's zoom in a little bit it comes back on itself to remove that little cusp that normally would get left there this is an exciting new pocket operation provided by one CNC XR7 high-speed zigzag pocketing with the ability for the tool to come back on itself so that there's no cusp left along the perimeter of the pocket another thing I want to point out before we wrap up this video is that within one CNC mill and also within one CNC lathe the tool libraries have been completely revamped and this example I'm just gonna head up to NC we're gonna to go to edit tool list and you'll notice that once I go inside the library tab you can see now that once inside the XR7 tool library the layout is even more efficient than it was in the past you simply select a category and then once you select on a tool you get a preview in the upper right hand corner again this is something that's been advanced in both the mill and also the lay side of one CNC XR7 thank you so much for watching this video it's been my pleasure to demonstrate some of the brand new powerful features of one CNC XR7 CAD and CAM. Thanks again and please contact if we can be of assistance.